What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going a little bit off brand and talking about Nikon's Z9 and specifically the rolling shutter performance on the camera. I mentioned back when I did my rolling shutter videos for the R5 and R5C, as well as my rolling shutter safe pan speed calculator video, that I was hoping to get to expand the number of cameras that I had rolling shutter data from, and I was hoping to get to the Nikon Z9 next. Well, I finally got to the Nikon Z9, and these are the results that I came up with. Now, before I get to the numbers, let's talk quickly about what and why we care and how this testing was done. So ultimately, we care about rolling shutter performance because it creates distortion in images that either have moving subjects or are moving as a whole, such as when you pan the camera. The faster the camera rolling shutter is, the less distortion that there is, from that and the better our images ultimately look. Now, ultimately this is happening because in a rolling shutter camera, the sensor is not read out as one monolithic or atomic operation. It's read out progressively from the top to the bottom of the area. And so the area where things are when the camera is reading out at the top of the frame is not necessarily where things will be when the camera reads out at the bottom of the frame. Ultimately, for cinematography, we care because this limits how fast we can pan the camera and how well things like ro or rotating things like propellers and rotor blades on helicopters will render in our video. Now, when it comes to talking about rolling shutter performances, for the vast majority of cameras, in fact, every camera I've ever run into, there isn't just one rolling shutter number that is there for the camera. There are several, and it depends on how you configure the camera. So the actual rolling shutter performance you may get on the camera depends on a couple of major settings that you have control over and some things that you don't really have control over at all. So the two things that we do have control over are the camera's crop factor, and simply this is a case of each individual pixel takes a certain amount of time to read out. And so if you have a crop in on the sensor, there's fewer pixels in the frame. And since we care about how long it takes to read out the frame, if there's fewer pixels and they all read at the same time, the frame gets read out faster. The other consideration is whether the camera is doing line skipping or down sampling to arrive at your lower output resolution. So in a down sampling camera, the camera has to read out the full pixel area or the full area of the sensor and all of the pixels, and then mathematically reduce that into a lower number. On the other hand, a line skipping camera simply skips pixels. It doesn't read out every line or every column or both. And as a result, there's fewer pixels for it to read and it can read out the image area faster. Now, the final consideration, and I think this is a big one when it comes to the Nikon Z9, is an engineering decision. So we have no real control over it and there's nothing we can really do about it. And that is balancing both power consumption and the thermal impact of noise or the impact on noise of the thermal output of the sensor versus rolling shutter performance. So engineers may choose to reduce the rolling shutter speed or the time at which the camera is reading out the sensor to have a more consistent thermal environment or reduce the power consumption the camera is using when shooting video. Okay, so the test setup. This is the same exact test setup that I used when I did the R5 and R5C testing and will continue to use going forward. Uh, I have another video that talks about the math behind the methodology and the test setup as a whole. I'll put a link to that in the description. The way this works is pretty simple. I have a very controlled pulse of light. I know the exact timing of. I have the shutter speed that I set the camera to. I know that. And I have the output video, which has bands of bright in it where the camera and light have con conspired, you could say, to expose part of the frame. From those three pieces of information, I can then calculate the rolling shutter time for the entire frame. So the camera in this test was obviously Nikon's Z9. The camera I was using was running version 3.10 for Nikon's firmware. The shutter speed was set to a 2,000th of a second. And for video options, I was shooting using Nikon's log profile or Nikon's N-Log log profile in H.265, 10-bit, and 420 chroma subsampling. Now, yes, I know, Nikon can shoot RAW on the Z9, both in their NRAW and in ProRes RAW formats. Unfortunately, the situation is the same as with my Canon cameras in that I don't have the software capability to process those files effectively. And so 
barring the fact that it would be a massive pile of work to be able to deal with them, uh, if I can even figure out a good way to deal with them, I've elected to simply shoot in a pro format that I can actually process and deal with you know, easily. Now, the good news here is that barring some really odd things, the rolling shutter performance that we should get out of the camera shouldn't change whether I'm using raw compression, ProRes compression, or H.265 compression. The rolling shutter happens before the image is handed to the compression algorithm and should be consistent from uh, compression method to compression method. So the fundamental test methodology is I set the camera up in front of the test light. I shoot six different clips at each setting or camera setting resolution and frame rate that I'm looking at testing. And those clips are each five seconds long. So the five second gives me between 120 and 600 frames, depending on the frame rate that I use to make uh, measurements of the band size or the exposed band size. And the six different passes gives me six different pulse times ranging from 65 microseconds to two milliseconds. All of this information is then averaged together to get the most accurate result that I can possibly get with this approach. So the first thing I wanted to look at with the Z9 was actually the rolling shutter performance when shooting still images. Nikon's headline feature, you could call it, and arguably the big evolutionary step the Z9 makes compared to other cameras on the market, is the complete issue of the or mechanical shutter in favor of a rolling shutter system or electronic shutter system. Now, personally, I think this is the future. Mechanical shutters are finicky, complex, potentially fragile parts that require you know, precision manufacturing and so on and so forth. And an electronic shutter is solid state. It's gonna be incredibly reliable and consistent over the entire lifetime of the camera and ultimately could increase the lifetime of the camera for us, which given how much these cameras cost, that's always a good thing. Longer life, less costs for repairs, you know, big plus. So we know since the Nikon Z9 has been out for over a year now, that the image quality when shooting stills is fantastic. Uh, there's really no way to argue or to, you know, other way to phrase it. And that there's basically no discernible difference between the rolling electronic shutter on it and somebody shooting with a camera that has a mechanical shutter capable of an 8,000th of a second shutter speed. What do the numbers say? Well, obviously the numbers are gonna back this up. In my measurements, I came up with a rolling shutter time of 2.9 milliseconds. There was a bit of a range here from as high as 3.5 milliseconds to as low as about 2.3 milliseconds, uh, but in short, it's good. How good? Well, a mechanical shutter runs about capable of about, or capable of an 8,000th of a second exposure time, runs about 2.4 milliseconds. I tested this with my R5, in shutter, uh, well, technically it was in electronic first curtain shutter mode. However, the propagation rate of the electronic first curtain has to match the propagation rate of the mechanical first curtain or it would mess up your exposures. So 2.4, 2.9, we're all in the same neighborhood. The, there's basically no real consideration one way or the other. And, you know, as obvious, Nikon's uh, Z9 sensor is uh, perfectly capable and really good in performance in this respect. Which brings me to video. For whatever reason, probably those engineering reasons I alluded to earlier, the great rolling shutter performance that you have when shooting stills does not really translate to video when you're shooting, or to when you're shooting video. So, first let's start with FX or full frame mode. When shooting in either 8K or 4K, at least at low frame rates, so 24 to 30 frames per second, the rolling shutter time is 15 milliseconds. This is basically on par with Canon stuff, Nike or Sony stuff, pretty much everything else that's out there. Now, what we know that the camera is doing in this case is reading out the sensor's native video resolution of 8256 by 4644 pixels and downsampling it to either uh, UHD 8K or UHD 4K. Now I say up to 30 frames per second because I don't actually know what's happening at 60. Unfortunately, I screwed up. In the process of shooting this, I managed to shoot every other test or every other resolution and test configuration at 60 frames per second. 
somehow I skipped 4K full frame at 60 frames per second. I know I'm kicking myself as it's a rather critical data point for the way the camera behaves. Moreover, in looking at the manual for firmware version two or three, when they added raw uh, video support, there's no easy analysis or no easy answer to draw from that. The camera is capable of reading out the full sensor area at 60 frames per second, so the full 8K at 60 or 8.2K at 60 frames per second, but it's also capable of reading out a line skipped version of the sensor at 8K at 60 frames per second. So which way Nikon actually went when shooting with a compressed output I don't know. Now, when shooting at 4K at 120 and all of the 2K resolutions, the rolling shutter performance dramatically improves down to five milliseconds. And this is easily the best number that I have seen on any uh, camera that I have looked at full frame 8K capable or 4K capable, well, specifically an 8K sensor doing 4K or 2K output. Clearly, this is not being read and downsampled. This is clearly being done with some form of line skipping, or at least I say clearly, is it seems to be the case based on the way the performance is. And for whatever reason, Nikon is using this for all 2K resolutions, whether it's slow or fast, as well as 4K 120. Now, when we switch over to DX or crop mode, we also get an interesting situation. So shooting 4K or 2K at 24 to 60 frames per second gives us a rolling shutter time of 9.7 milliseconds. Again, this seems to be pretty standard for a crop censored camera, the, or the, a crop sensor area. Likewise, given the fact that all of these configurations are using the same or all, all have the same rolling shutter time, my expectation is that they are being downsampled from the native DX video resolution of 5392 to 30, by 3032 pixels to whatever output resolution you've chosen, so 4K or 2K. When you switch the camera to 120 frame per second mode, things change. So Nikon had decided that in crop mode at high frame rates, because of limitations either with rolling shutter speed or the resolution that the camera actually has in DX mode, that instead of doing something with the DX output or limiting what setting, what resolution outputs you can choose, they would instead simply read out a 3840 by 2160 pixel area in the center of the sensor at full resolution. So that's 4K. It turns out to be a 2.3X crop factor instead of the 1.5X crop factor that you typically have with DX lenses to get the improved frame rate or rolling shutter time needed for it. So both 4K and 2K at 120 frames per second have a 6.9 millisecond rolling shutter time, implying that the 4K central crop is being read out and downsampled from 4K to 2K when you shoot in 2K mode. Now, this poses an interesting question for me and certainly an interesting situation for Nikon. In DX mode, there really isn't enough resolution to line skip and provide a 4K output. The, you simply don't have 2000 lines left after you skip half of the 3032 lines that are available. And likely, or likewise, for whatever reason, the camera isn't reading out the sensor fast enough to support a downsampled 4K 120 or 2K 120 output. The rolling shutter time is 9.7 milliseconds in DX mode, and you need an 8.3 millisecond or faster rolling shutter time to support 120 frames per second. Again, I'm a little confused by all of this, given the fact that the camera can read out the full frame sensor in still mode in three and under three milliseconds. So it seems like they should be able to have made DX mode you know, that little bit faster than it really needed to be. And honestly, it didn't need to be tremendously faster. Only about a millisecond and a half would have got them to, 4K, or to 120 frames per second when in DX mode. Ultimately though, my, I guess if you call it a criticism is I would have just liked to have seen more flexibility. 
I like options, what can I say? And having the ability to shoot 4K and 2K at 20 frames or 24 to 60 frames per second at the 1.5X crop, and then a 2K 120 frame per second option at the 1.5X crop, which there is enough resolution to support line skipping for that, coupled with a 2.3X crop, or let's call it super 16 resolution, where you could shoot 4K and 2K, that's what would be supported, at all frame rates that the camera is capable of, so from 24 to 120 frames per second. It just seems to me like it would be more flexible and you have more options. And quite honestly, like I said, I like options in cameras. So let's wrap this up and quickly talk about the overall situation and what you might want to consider for optimizing your rolling shutter performance. So as I said, still shutter performance just isn't translating to video on the Z9. And I'm that I think that's a quite disappointing. Uh, the Nikon obviously has a sensor that is capable of being read out in what would be industry leading performance and not just on uh, mirrorless cameras, but even on probably the vast majority of cinema cameras, or they certainly could slow it down a little bit and match high-end cinema cameras in terms of rolling shutter performance, and it just doesn't seem like it's there. The 15 millisecond rolling shutter time in 8K and 4K resolutions uh, full frame is really it's not anything to write home about. It's not bad, it's not gonna ruin anything you shoot, uh, but given the still performance, it could be so much better. The camera also doesn't provide uh, the flexibility that you might have in other cameras, and I don't wanna make this a brand versus brand thing, uh, but for example, in Canon's R5, you have the option to choose between shooting in 4K full frame that's downsampled from the 8K output or line skipped from the 8K output. And while a lot of people would make an argument for why you would want to do that. The rolling shutter performance improves dramatically, switching from downsampled to line skipping. And we see that is the case even on the Z9 when they're using what are very clearly line skipped operations, there's a much better rolling shutter time in that configuration. Now, why would you want this? Well, if you're using the Z9 to shoot, for example, an indie film, you can use the higher resolution or well, any of these cameras, you could use the higher resolution downsampled or higher quality downsampled video to shoot your slow paced dramatic scenes and then use the faster, lower quality, even though it's still gonna be good quality 4K video, to shoot the faster action fight scenes. The faster action's already gonna mask a lot of the quality considerations because you have so much motion, there's going to be more motion blur and that's gonna make the images softer as a whole. So the line skipping isn't going to be as big of a consideration as it might be if you were talking about, you know, much slower dramatic content. So with that said, if you wanna shoot fast action on the Z9, your best frame rate or your best considerations are shooting in 2K uh, on the full frame sensor. And again, I'm not talking about fast, high frame rate fast action. I'm just talking about shooting at regular frame rates, but you have faster action going on. Uh, you're going to want to shoot 2K in full frame. That has by far the best rolling shutter performance on the camera, as does the 120 frame per second 4K in full frame. So you'd want to favor that as well for your, uh, your high speed shooting. And or the next choice would be 4K output in DX mode. There's gonna give you, uh, or 2K for that matter. Uh, but in DX mode, you get slightly better or you get better rolling shutter performance, not quite twice as fast, but approaching that compared to the full frame 4K and 8K settings. And you still should get good image quality because it's still gonna be downsampled from a fairly, or a slightly higher resolution. So you'll get some of the downsampling advantages. So, that is the rolling shutter testing that I have done on Nikon's Z9. If you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you aren't already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.